Hey guys, listen. No, 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 don't tune it out. Huh? I know I'm not the only one, right? Do you ever sit at home and you're watching these cleaning videos on YouTube, like the Clean With Me's or the Cleaning Motivation, and you wonder, why is it that when I clean my house, it never looks that perfectly clean? <laughs> I know it, I know it, I know what you're thinking, I already know. I get this from my clients all the time. Listen, don't worry, don't stress, don't fret, and definitely don't feel bad. And definitely don't feel bad. Don't be intimidated. Well, first of all, through God, all things are possible, so jot that down. Because nine times out of 10, you're just using some of the wrong mm, cleaning techniques, okay? We're gonna tweak some of that. So if you come with me, we're gonna jump in here and explore this list of 10, 10 cleaning mistakes that you're possibly making that makes your home look not as clean as you would want it to be. So dirty. So we're gonna go through this list, get this going for you so you can get the clean home that you desire and the clean home that you deserve. Let's go. Oh. One second. Number 10 is the most important. Don't forget, make sure you watch number 10. See you in a sec. Number one, mixing bleach with other cleaners. Mixing bleach with other cleaners. Do not mix your bleach with other cleaners. This can cause a major chemical reaction. If you don't know what you're doing, do not do it. Mixing bleach with ammonia, alcohol, some other cleaners that might be under your, your cabinet, in the kitchen, wherever you keep your cleaners, don't do it. Or please, please, please. Please, 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 please. Do the research, make sure it's safe to mix one particular cleaner with your bleach or any other two cleaners together. It doesn't have to be bleach. Be careful. Number two, let's go. This is not the way. I don't think that's right. It ain't supposed to be like that. Which brings me to number two. Your soap time. You're not letting the cleaner soak into your surfaces or whatever you're cleaning. When you're using either residential or commercial cleaners, they typically recommend a one minute, two minutes, you know, 60 seconds, which is a minute, um, to let the cleaner soak. That gives the cleaner time to break down bacteria and germs and breaks up the grime and dirt that may be on that surface or upholstery, whatever the case may be. So the longer you let it sit, the better your clean is gonna be. And that can be the difference between having a surface clean and a deep clean. What you wanna do, spray your surface, in this case, the stove. Spray your surface. Go do something else. Let that sit. Yeah, while this is waiting, while this is soaking, you can go over, wash the dishes, or sweep the floor. So we're gonna wait a few minutes. Okay, let's see. Five minutes later. Okay, that's enough. So it's been about five minutes, right? So then you want to wipe the surface. So you let that cleaner sit. In my case, I let it sit for about five minutes, and there we have it. I didn't have to scrape, I didn't have to use any elbow grease, I didn't have to do any of that. It makes it a lot easier. You cut time on your cleaning, and you make it a lot easier for you, and then you can get that stove looking the way you see these people looking on YouTube, right? That's what we're here for. So let's correct that. Allow your cleaners to set, for a few minutes, it doesn't have to be five minutes, it could be one minute or two minutes. Let it sit and then clean your surface, or whatever you clean. That can go for your floors, your microwaves, your cabinets, anything, okay? The third mistake that you're possibly doing in your home that's probably keeping it from looking as clean as it can be is this. All purpose cleaners. Oh, wow. Listen, they're great. We love them. I love them. I have one, as you can see. But listen. Listen. Unfortunately, there's no such thing as a truly all-purpose cleaner. What? Okay. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. What do I do now? 
If you have expensive absorbent surfaces in your home, you don't want to use an all-purpose comb. Those surfaces need specific products like your marble countertops, your marble floors, your granite countertops, your wooden floors, your luxury vinyls. You can't clean those with any and every kind of product. You have to be completely careful and safe and know what you're doing. Message. You can damage those beautiful marble floors. You can damage those beautiful granite or marble quartz countertops. It'd be like an, a, what, a thousand, two thousand dollar mistake. What you talking about, Willis? You don't want that. Who wants that? You don't want to deal with that. There's a method to the madness, okay? Be completely sure you're cleaning with the right products on the right surface. So while all-purpose cleaner can be used on many different surfaces, that's great. You still want to make sure that you're using the right cleaner on the right surface. It'll save you money, it'll save you time, and you'll thank me later, and it'll look pristine if you do it the right way. Number four, tackling everything at one time. You want to go into cleaning with a plan, with a strategy, okay? Trying to do everything all at one time can be overwhelming, it can be stressful, it could be tiresome. If you're like me, I'm 41 years old, cleaning the entire house at one time, it will leave me completely exhausted for the rest of the day and I don't wanna do anything else. Who wants that? Absolutely not. Break down your project, break down your cleaning. If you have to, make a cleaning schedule. On Mondays, you do the kitchen. To, on Wednesday, you do the bathrooms in the house. Just break down that larger project into smaller projects. You will thank me later. Knock out that idea that you have to be perfect, like you think you're Joan Cleaver on TV who cleans the house all day. She's not winded, she feels great, she's happy. That is television and it's not reality. Not for all of us, at least not for me, okay? If you wanna do the bedrooms on one day and on the weekend, you're gonna take care of the kitchen and the floors, trust me, it's gonna make you feel better. You're gonna finish with energy, you'll have time and the energy to do other things that you want to do for the rest of the day. And another thing is when you take your time, you can pick out every little thing while you're cleaning and not miss those things. If you're rushing, trying to get the whole house done, there are things that you can look over and your house won't be as clean as you want it to be, okay? So think about it. Listen to what I'm saying. Please, go on. Take the house as your major project, break those things down into smaller projects, and that way you'll have the energy, you won't miss anything, and everything would be pristine when you're done. Number five. fabric softener and your microfiber towels. Listen, we all love a fabric softener, but when you wash your microfiber towels with a fabric softener, it coats the towel with a chemical. That chemical keeps that microfiber towel from absorbing a lick of water. What the hell, girls? So it's not doing its purpose. Yes, they shine your, your chrome, your metals perfectly. But once you use fabric softener to wash those microfiber towels, after one cycle, you can hang that towel up because it's not going to do what you need it to do. I ain't got time for that. So instead of doing that, get a splash of vinegar. You can throw it in your wash. It'll maintain its job for number one. It won't smell really bad like vinegar. They'll be fine. And you can continue using the towel. Number six, cleaning your windows in the sunshine. I know, right? What is the best time, or what, what is the better time to clean your windows when the sun is shining, it's early in the morning? Listen, you don't wanna make that mistake. Heat plus the sunshine is going to make the cleaners evaporate. So what happens is, as soon as you spray that cleaner on that window or that glass surface, that heat from that sunshine is going to cause it to evaporate almost immediately. So what do you think happens with that? Tell me. It's going to leave streaks. <gasps> Why? We don't want streaks. We want clear, clear, clear. 
But if you do that with the sunshine, it's gonna happen, okay? So the best way to avoid fighting with that sunshine and fighting against mother nature to get that window as sparkling clean as you want, choose a different day, a cooler day or a cooler time of day with a nice overcast where the sun is not di shining directly into that window. It's just best to do it a different time of day when the sun is almost gone or gone period, okay? That's gonna be your best bet. So don't fight against mother nature, just choose a different day. Trick her a little bit. Trust me, it works. Okay guys, we are getting there. Number seven. <laughs> Keeping your sponges too long. Ew! Look, I am absolutely amazed about how many people keep these sponges and they try to squeeze out every little bit of life that's left in this sponge. Trust me, I get it. I'm as frugal as the next girl. But use the sponge, throw it out. Throw that shit away. A week or two tops. Get you a variety pack of sponges with different kinds of sponges in them. It's going to be your lifesaver, okay? You don't want to hold on to this sponge and continue to use this sponge over and over again. Nice trick is after you've used the sponge, throw it in the microwave for about 60 seconds, you know, 60, 65 seconds, if that long, maybe 30 seconds. It will cook out, burn out any bacteria or germs because trust me, the germs and bacteria that lives there, they love, 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 love a wet, damp sponge or brush. Mm. Now, I don't think you realize it, but a sponge that you kept for months and months and months, it's like the dirtiest thing in your house outside of a toilet brush. Ew. So imagine, just, ugh, I don't want to imagine, okay? So, but it's the same thing, it's the same thing. That bacteria, it lives in sponges and brushes. You don't want to do that. So after a week or so, toss the sponge. Make sure you get you a nice variety pack that has several in there and just continue. Just go through the process and when you're done, go get you a new bag. But trust me, you don't want to continue to use one sponge for weeks and weeks and weeks because you're literally cleaning your surface with bacteria and germs. Just more dirt, okay? Just leaving streaks and spots and just little nasty things that you can't even see, okay? So remember, week, two weeks tops, throw it out. Trust me, you will thank me later. Okay, number eight, you guys. Two more, two more, just two more, stick with me. Using those abrasive cleaning pads, they will wreak havoc on your stainless steel. Sorry, my dog is barking. They will wreak havoc on your stainless steel refrigerators, dishwashers, um, your pots and pans, and even your sinks. It can really cause problems. What you really want to do, you want to opt in to use a soft towel, like a microfiber towel. And what did I tell you in the other tip? Do not use fabric softener when you're cleaning your microfiber towels because in situations like this, it's not gonna absorb any water, okay? So, when you're cleaning your refrigerators, your dishwashers, fighting those fingerprints and things like that, you wanna make sure you do not use abrasive scrubbies, cleaning pads, or brushes, and you wanna use something soft like a microfiber towel. It will do the job, trust me. You'll thank me later. Okay, number nine, not managing dust before it collects. Listen, I'm gonna be perfectly honest, there's no way to completely eliminate dust from happening. Not gonna happen. You can't, that's just one thing you can never just get rid of 100%, unless you're dusting every single day, all day long. It's gonna happen, it's gonna collect. But there are ways to manage it and prevent it before it collects and accumulates throughout your house. Here are a few ways that I've learned from Martha Stewart. See, she's great. You do. Oh, la, la. You can change your air filters regularly. You can use 
um, air purifiers. They are, they're absolutely great. Um, if you have pets, I have three. I have three dogs and they live in the house. They're going outside, they come in, they bring those things in and then their hair, it can get everywhere. Maintain your dogs. You have to groom them frequently, brush them frequently. That will cut down on their hair getting all over the place, okay? Use a doormat. Make sure you use a doormat before you track those things in the house. That is a great preventative measure. And one trick that I really, really love that a lot of people aren't aware of. If you're like myself, I love my windows to be open. Buy a plant, a house plant. Maybe, you know, a little hut that's kind of midway up, depending on how your windows are, windows are made. Place that house plant in front of the window, and guess what? It collects that dust that's coming in through the windows. It's attracted to those plants. So that's a really smart way of doing that, especially if you can find a plant that has like the prickly hairs on it or kind of prickly leaves. Catch the dust a lot more than the smooth plants, well the smooth leaves. So those are just some tricks that you can do to keep the dust managed in your home. Okay guys, you made it. Get Mistake number 10. Drum roll, please. Mistake number 10. Cleaning from bottom to top. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. not clean your house from bottom to top. You know why? Because if you do, it's just creating more work for you to do. You have to stop! And you're going to absolutely miss something, okay? This is how you should clean your home. You should clean your home from top to bottom. For instance, from the corners, the walls, ceiling fans, top shelves, top of cabinets, top of refrigerators, you want to work your way down. Meaning, the last thing that you should be cleaning in your house, in your room, bathroom, living room, kitchen, everywhere. The last thing you should be cleaning are your floors. Does that make sense? It all makes sense now. Because everything, you're dusting everything, everything is going to go to the floor. It's going to go to the floor. So once you're done with everything, you have all the tables dusted, the furniture's polished, the cabinets, the countertops clean, the stove clean, the oven, the microwaves, the fans in your house, all of those things. It's going to end up on the floor. So when you're done and you finally get down to the floor, you get everything cleaned up, you actually have a completed room. The room is completely clean. You don't have to worry about anything falling. If you go back to do the ceiling, I'm sorry, the ceiling fan, then now you have dust on the floor. You're gonna have to come back and vacuum up or come back and mop or sweep. You wanna get all of that taken care of. So make sure you always, 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 always clean your room, your house, your kitchen, every room in your house from top to bottom. And guess what? Now, if you follow all of these steps from one to 10, your house is gonna be just as perfectly clean as these homes that we see on YouTube every single day. Ah. I'm telling you, just get to, it's, it takes practice. It takes practice. If you start cleaning, just pop in this video, pop up this video and follow the steps. These are like the main ones to me, the surfaces, the floors, you know, the cleaning products that you're using, what you're using to clean. Those are the most important things. Message! These are just some of the techniques that I use as a professional cleaner to make my house look just perfectly and insanely clean. To where when people come in, they don't want to touch anything, okay? That's how you, that's, you know, that, that's me. That's how I like it to look. That's just me. Everyone isn't like that. Okay, Wooji. I hope these tips help you tremendously to give you the perfectly, insanely clean home that you desire and absolutely deserve. You deserve it. Okay? 
So I, I'll see you in the next video. Make sure that you like and subscribe. That would be awesome. We're a new channel, so we're trying to grow here. Help us get there. Someone please call 911. <laughs> so like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.